Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Somebody give him glory. Somebody give him glory. Come on, give him glory. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Come on and lift him up, hallelujah. Come on, somebody say hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We magnify your name, Lord. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. Somebody say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. Has he been good to you? Has he been good to you? Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. God, we thank you for your presence in this house. Lord, we want to continue to bless your name. Knowing that you are the master and creator of all things. Lord, we magnify you in this house because your name is great. It's not the name of my circumstances. It's not the name of my situation. But it is the name of Jesus that it is exalted above all things. And God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We magnify your name with our whole self. With all that is within me, God. We magnify your name. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's nothing like giving God praise. There's nothing like giving him the honor that is due his name. I just need to take a few minutes just to think about some things in my own life that God has done for me, and I, and, and I can't help but just to express my gratitude. Because if I was left to my own devices, if I was left to my own power, somebody don't hear me. If you were left, I talk over here. If you were left to your own devices, if it had not been for the Lord on your side, somebody tell me, where would I be? It wouldn't be here. <laughs> and I'm so grateful that I'm here in the house of the Lord worshiping God and praising his name giving him glory that I can lift my hands I, I can open my mouth and give him glory I can magnify the name of the Lord I can say glory hallelujah because it's all right with me and I will bless the name of the Lord. I will bless the name of the Lord. I will bless the name of the Lord. 
at all times and uh, his praise shall continually be in my mouth hallelujah glory hallelujah hallelujah thank you lord i magnify your name jesus hallelujah i don't know about you but i'm excited to be serving the lord I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord, blessing his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, thank you, God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and get your Bibles. Come on and get your Bible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, 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 come on, turn your Bibles to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, hallelujah, oh, oh, oh. there is none like you no one else can touch my heart like you do I can search for let's turn off our cell phones for eternity long find us there is no got Ephesians chapter 1. All right. I'm going to start getting my binoculars out for y'all that ain't got no Bibles. We're going to get it on camera. When we get on the, when we get in, when we get in the big church, we on TV, we're going gonna to start doing that thing. This is my Bible. <laughs> All right. We got, I can, well, I can, okay, I can come into the, we got, uh, Bibles on the cell phones now too, amen. So I can't, so I can't, I can't holler out and say, "Is you texting <laughs> in the church house?" Amen. All right. <laughs> All right. One day we're gonna get something. I saw something where they um, started uh, all across the congregation. They they text in their biblical questions and they flash them up on the screen. And then right there on the spot, the pastor is there uh, addressing uh, questions during his sermon that people have. Ain't that some, that's an, in, an interactive way to have church, you know. <laughs> you say you're not ready. <laughs> you say you're not ready for that, Brother Lonzo. <laughs> you're not ready. <laughs> Text the wrong thing, huh? <laughs> Well, you, you have a screener. You have a screener. You know. <laughs> Amen. All right. Ephesians chapter 1, I'm beginning at verse 15. And the word of God says, I'm reading from the message translation. You know, I like the message. Like I always tell you, if you get the message, it'll read you while you're reading it. It's good. 
Amen. All right. All right. Give me a little softness. All right. The Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15, and I'm reading through 19. It says, that's why when I heard of the solid trust you have in the master Jesus and your outpouring of love to all the followers of Jesus, I couldn't stop thanking God for you every time I prayed. I'd think of you and give thanks. But I do more than thank. I ask. I ask the Lord God, our Master, Jesus Christ, the God of glory, to make you intelligent and discerning in knowing him personally. That your eyes will be focused and clear so that you can see exactly, somebody say exactly, what it is he is calling you to do. Grasp the immensity of his glorious way, of this glorious way of life that he has for his followers. Oh, the utter extravagance of his work in us. Those who trust in him. Endless energy. This is the part I like. Endless energy. Boundless strength. Endless energy. Boundless strength. We've been talking about endurance this month, right? You can't endure without strength. You can't endure without energy. <laughs> For those who trust in the Lord, endless energy, boundless strength. Father God, I'm asking you to touch us in this moment by your word. Lord, help me to move out of the way. Push me out of the way as you normally do. <laughs> And let your word forth go, go forth with strength, power, and conviction. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. I'm talking to you tonight about now. Tell the Lord thank you. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Somebody say thank you. <laughs> We've been talking about endurance. We've been talking about faith. Walking in faith. We learned in Bible study that faith is our ability to trust and believe where we really don't have evidence to believe. We, we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen? Amen? We are learning how to respect the house of God. We're learning how to respect the people of God. We're learning how to inspect, respect instruction from leadership. We, oh, we didn't get an amen out on that. How did they yell that? <laughs> We're learning that the marker of our true faith is our obedience to God. Okay? The marker of the true believer is our ability to obey God. And how do we do that? We, why do we learn what God wants? We press in in Scripture. We get into the Word of God. Amen? We get into pressing in the Scripture. We press in in love, loving one another. Sometimes it's a challenge. Sometimes we got folks that are sometimes unlovable, that don't want to act right or don't want to act the way we want them to act. But God still commands us to love those individuals. God commands us to even love our enemies. The ones that done just lied on you. The ones that done set the trap for you. The one he said, come on now, he says, love. Even them. He says, if they slap you in the face, give them another one. No. Give them another one. Amen. <laughs> and the other marker of the true believer is that we ought to Never stop fighting the fight of faith. 
The marker of a true believer is that we don't give up. We don't quit when things get hard. We continue to press forward even though it might take us to a place where we might even lose our lives. It's true. It's true. And so unless you are willing to press, press, press toward the mark, you might want to rethink whether you want to call yourself a believer, a Christian. Because there's a difference between being saved and being a Christian. Because you can be saved because that work has nothing to do with you except the fact that you accept it. But if you're going to be a follower, that takes a decision. That takes energy. <laughs> that takes strength. That takes some courage. And sometimes we don't always have that in reserve. Those things need to be developed. They need to be built. And it takes time. It takes patience. It takes endurance and endeavoring. Amen? And so one of the markers of a true believer also is a life, or rather, it is the characteristic of gratitude. Thankfulness. Being thankful that when I look over my life, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, when I assign the appropriate value to what God has done in my life, then it produces gratitude in my life. Why should I be thankful? Think about it. I mean, what exactly should I be thankful for? I mean, yes, we're thankful for all the things that God has done for us, but, or at least we say we are. We sing songs like, thank you, Lord and Father God, I appreciate you. And some folk throw up their hands and they holler, thank you, like a good Baptist girl do. All right. And perhaps, perhaps when you show your thankfulness, it sounds a little something like, God, I thank you for my life. I thank you for my strength and my health and the food on my table and a place to sleep. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me from all hurt, harm, and danger and for keeping me clothed and in a portion <laughs> of my right mind. Y'all heard that, right? <laughs> if we're a little more mature in our walk with God, our Thanksgiving prayer might sound a little like this. God, I thank you that you have chosen me before the foundation of the world to be holy without blameless before you in love. I thank you, God, that you have chosen me to be your child and you have accepted me in the beloved. I thank you, God, for your redemption and for paying the price through your blood for the forgiveness of my sins and that I am sealed with the Holy Spirit in the earnest of my inheritance. Thank you, God. Some of us are not there yet, are we? <laughs> We're not there yet. Because that's true. God has signed, sealed, and delivered you. And we ought to be thankful for what God has done. He's placed the Holy Spirit on the inside of you as his marker. Amen? Amen. And some folks, unfortunately, can't bring themselves, can't shape their lips to utter thanks because they haven't recognized yet the value of the gift. Some folks just aren't really yet ready to accept the fact that God is good. They're just not there yet. They go around from day to day, from one problem and disappointment to the next, with hardly enough strength to hold their head up, letting the world beat them up and down and all around, literally walking a living death and never really knowing the difference. Thinking, well, I guess this is as good as it's going to get. This is my lot. And God really must hate me. God really must be mad at me. And since I can't really seem to change myself, and that's your problem sometimes, you think you can change yourself. They think me and God ain't never gonna get along. So I may as well get comfortable with it. That this is the way things will always be. And I may as well just get used to the idea that God and me, we just ain't gonna mix. And I need you to know today as you have allowed me to operate in your life as your pastor, and you are the Lord's flock that God has given me charge of, 
I break the yoke of the devil right now in the name of Jesus. For every person that walks through this door, I break that mindset that would say that I can't be connected to God. I break that mindset right now, and I pray for each of you right here and now that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. Today, I pray that you will truly understand what is the hope of God's calling in you and how exceedingly valuable the investment that God has made in you really is. We're talking beyond the stacks of money that you can imagine. I want you to imagine the biggest stack of money that you can think of. You know, when I see them uh, clips on the news, when they make those drug busts, and they see, you see all them stacks of money, I'm like, oh, Lord, I just want one, one, one stack. Imagine as many stacks. As the investment that God has made in you is more than that. The value of it is more than that. More than as much money as you can imagine. I pray right now that you will know the power that God gives to those who will believe. Will you believe? Will you believe? Do you believe? I want you to know the power that God gives to those who believe. The power that is given through what Jesus Christ did when he rose from the dead. He says when he rose from the dead, he says, mm. he, says he would give power unto them that believe to be his witnesses and I need you to know today that you can't be a witness for Christ while you are still being a witness to all that other stuff that you're hanging on to hear me hear me hear me he said he's given you power to be witnesses for Christ and it is my desire tonight that you will know the power that is above every principality, every demonic force, above every other power, above every might or anything that is currently having dominion over you. I need you to know that he's given you power. Power that is above every name in heaven or in earth. Power that is above poverty. Power that is above crack cocaine. Power that is above alcohol and all your addictions. Power that is above homelessness and an unclean mind. Power that is above selfishness. Power that is above pride. Power that is above arrogance. It's above laziness. Above apathy. Above disobedience. Power that is above your social classes, your gender expressions, and your sexual identities. It's power to them who will believe. Will you believe? Will you believe? It's power. Power to those who believe that God, that all authority has been given to Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's if you will believe. That all power and authority has been given to Christ. Power to those who believe that all things have been placed under his feet. All things. All things. Your sickness is under his feet. Your addiction is under his feet. Your lack, your poverty is under his feet. The power has been given to those who believe that Christ has been given as the head of all things. Power. Power is given to those who we believe that we are his body and we are the fullness of him that we are the hands and feet of Christ in the earth will you believe if the life of the true believer is one of gratitude 
then I ought to be giving thanks by living thanks. I'll say it again. If the marker of a true believer is a life of gratitude, then I ought to be giving thanks by living thanks. A life that says thank you to God is waking up every day and connecting to the power of the Holy Spirit by acknowledging and submitting to the headship of Christ. Somebody missed it. I get up on purpose and I say, thank you, Lord, for putting the breath of life in me. And because you did, I submit my life to you today. All day. I do it on purpose. And I do it by faith. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Can you see yourself doing it? Every day. Waking up. God, I give you my life. Afresh. Anew. Amen. Uh, we got to decide that we acknowledge and submit ourselves to the headship of Christ in our lives and living a spirit-empowered life. A life that is driven by the spirit. So no more of this, I can't do it. No more of this, I can't make it. I, I, I can't stop smoking crack. Or, I, or, or being drunk all the time. No more, I can't leave this abusive relationship. I'm just going to die if I don't find a lover. No more, I'm going to stop eating myself sick. No more, I'm going to be so depressed that I stop taking my meds anymore. I'm not coming to church. I'm not praying. I'm not singing. I'm not, I'm not, I can't. I have one thing to say. You better work. <laughs> Instead of saying, why me? Why not me? Is the spirit of God in you? Or do we only do Jesus when we come to church? Is there anybody in here tonight who will, instead of saying, why me, will say, why not me? Is there anybody here that will tell the Lord, thank you, and you will let the power of God come on in your life? Is there anybody that will show some gratitude for what God has done and stand up and believe? Hallelujah. Is there anybody that will show some gratitude for what the Lord has done? Believe that Jesus has all power in his hand and believe that he's given it to you. Will somebody tell the Lord, thank you, and walk out of here tonight and not be the same way you came in. Hallelujah. Is there anybody in here tonight that will say I'm determined that I'll say thank you God. I'll live a life that's empowered by the Holy Ghost. I'll no longer think so little of myself. I'll no longer think so little of my life and the things that you've given me God. I won't minimize the power that you've invested in me. And, and if I can borrow a little something from the old time church, hallelujah, I need you to know today that it's power to walk right. And it's power to talk right. It's power to live right. It is power to think right. It's power to get your money right. And it's power to get your relationship right. It's power to stop lying. It's power to stop cheating. It's power to stop stealing. It's power to stop killing yourself with cigarettes and alcohol. It's power to stop being a hater and start being a lover. It's power to get out of laziness and apathy. It's power to, to come on out of that abusive relationship. It's power to give up the I don't care spirit and say, yes, I do care. It's power to come out of that abusive relationship and your sex addictions. It's 
power to get yourself together and right before God. Somebody say thank you, hallelujah. I need you to know it's power. It's power. Power. And I'm not finished yet, hallelujah. It's power to live from day to day. Even when you got HIV, hallelujah. It's power to stop going to jail all the time, hallelujah. It's power to start being a blessing. To start being a blessing instead of a curse. Hallelujah, it's power. Power to be alert. It's power to hear the word of God. It's power to lift up your name of Jesus. It's power to say, I'm somebody. It's power to say, I'm somebody. Hallelujah. And I don't care what they say about me. As for me and my house, I will, I will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to know it's power. He said he's giving you power to be a witness, to be a witness for the Lord, to be a witness for Jesus. It's power that will set you free so that you can give God glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody tell us, tell the Lord thank you. Come on and tell the Lord thank you. Come on and tell the Lord thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody say it's power. God, I want your power, power. Come on and reach out, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord is good, hallelujah, hallelujah. Will somebody worship him with me? If you love the Lord, come on and get on your feet and bless the name of God, hallelujah. There's power, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, I magnify your name, Jesus, hallelujah, 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 oh God, oh God, oh God, I need your power, I need your boundless energy, I need your boundless energy, I need your unwavering strength, oh Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. He says it can be yours if you'll only believe, if you will believe, believe. Hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah, Lord. I thank the Lord, I thank the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let the Holy Spirit come on in. Oh, hallelujah. I magnify your name. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Lord, send your power just now. Oh, Lord, send your power just now. Oh, Lord, send your power just now. And baptize everyone. Help me see. Oh, oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. And baptize everyone. Come on, say it. Power, Lord. Power, Lord. Power, Lord. Power, Lord. Power, Lord. Power, Lord. And baptize everyone. Sing it one more time. Oh, oh Lord. Sing the power just now. Oh, Power just now and baptize everyone. Come on, lift your hands and receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
hallelujah. Right now, while the Spirit of God is high, I need to, to just extend invitation to anyone that does not know the Lord as your Savior. I have to let you know today that God desires more than anything, more than anything, to be in relationship with you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to walk with you. He wants to be your friend. He wants to guide you in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I also want to extend invitation to anyone that wants to experience the power. I want to pray for you today. I want you to have the power of the Holy Ghost exploding on the inside of you. That you will never, ever, 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 ever have a doubt in your life again that the Lord is Emmanuel, that God is with you. And the power of the Holy Ghost manifests itself in many, many ways. Some people want to say it's only one way, you know, when you, when you get to talking in tongues and all that other stuff. Now, I speak in tongues. I believe in tongues. But the power of God can manifest itself when you are just having conversation with people. I believe the power of God manifested itself when you and I had the conversation on the bus. And just in the prompting of me giving you a flyer that the Spirit of God spoke to you and you responded and now your life has changed. It's not what it was before. And it can be something as simple as that if you will believe. What believing is what faith is, it is your belief in action. It is your belief in action. It is allowing myself to be willing to let God use me. Because if I really believe that God wants to, then I just step out. I just step out. I have that conversation. I make that phone call. I fill out that job application. I do whatever it is. I, I flush the crack pipe down the toilet. Whatever it is. Okay? Whatever it is. The, Holy, the power of the Holy Ghost will manifest itself in those who believe. The challenge is I've got to cross that thin line from doubt to belief and believe that God is working working in my life on my behalf and on behalf of those who my life touches in my stuff in my bank account in my money In your dog. <laughs> He's going to learn to be obedient. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. <laughs> you going to lay hands on Scooby. And say, no, 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 no. Lay hands on him. Pray, pray for the baby. You watch. I'm telling you, you watch. You believe. And when you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I didn't take no medicine before I came to church today. And so I've been struggling with these things all week long, but I know that I am the healed of the Lord. And so as often as I'm able to walk, I'm going to walk as though I am the healed of the Lord. I believe it. And my legs are always going to be able to do what they need, what needs to be done. I'm not going to make any wild pro proclaim that, you know, you know where, where my faith is today is that I believe that when I get up, I'm going to be able to stand and I'm going to walk. 
Some people, you know, and when I and as I as I mature in that, I'll believe God that one day I'm not going to have pain anymore. That I'll be healed. Now, you know, if, if it means I'm not going to have any pain anymore, God says I need to lose weight. Ugh. Okay. Sometimes your deliverance requires something of you. Because the blood of Jesus is available. It's just, are you going to believe? And are you going to act on what you believe? And so if I need to find me a swimming pool somewhere and do me some water aerobics or something, because I ain't fall that exercise, and I like to swim and all this stuff. That's good. I ran into somebody the other day, and I, was, I went to go sing karaoke. And I was sitting on the stool, and I kept hearing a creak and crack. And went, I was like, I'm going to break this thing. And she's, he said, no, you're not. And I realized it was metal. <laughs> and I said, I hear it cracking already. And so he leans over, and he says, well, I work in weight loss. He said, are you thinking about it? I said, no. <laughs> he said, well, I'm not going to help you. <laughs> I say, good, go sit somewhere else and stop trying to remind me of stuff I don't want to do. <laughs> but I believe, it, it, when I just think about where, <laughs> I just rejoice in the Lord, I really do, because I think about, you know, y'all have seen me step out in faith tonight. Maybe the music helped me a little bit, but you know what? I'm not a hoop and a holler, so that's the first time that I don't, I don't cross, and I... <laughs> hey, hey, hey. But I, uh, I never, uh, I was challenged by that growing up because, especially in the black church, um, I mean, you go to you go to some Bible schools and they teach you how to do that. They, they actually teach you how to hoop, and I've I've always felt like. Well, that, that when somebody told me that it ruined it for me no it ruined it for me because I believed it was the Holy Ghost all that, but I could tell people to hoop and hoop and holler and be in the flesh just like you can get up and sing a song and be in the flesh you can be out here clapping your hands and be in the flesh our objective is to be in the spirit and so I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost that's here tonight and so, as I always encourage you, never go below where the Holy Spirit is taking you. Never go backward from the point that the Holy Spirit is taking you. And we've gone to another level. As a, yeah, hey, let that just let that sink in. Don't go back. Don't go back to the stuff. That boy, or whatever. Woo. That living situation, that job. Mm. Mm. Don't go back. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Don't go back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.